One of the things I love about living in Skagit County is its proximity to Island County. When it comes to describing the bucolic island splendor of Kameno and Whidbey, you quickly run out of superlatives. And if you want a deep dive into its equally rich and enticing history, you definitely need to visit Coopville and the Island County Historical Society Museum. Among the museum's collections are three rare dugout canoes that are the centerpieces of its Native People, Native Places exhibit, which include artifacts from the earliest water festival canoe races. This is also where you'll find Tony Clattisby on his rare days off from helping Michelle Calvin run their Laconer coffee shop and cultural meeting ground, Beaver Tales. Tony has been communing with a 200-year-old canoe of historical significance with the intent of replicating its design in the form of a strip plank canoe to be christened My Cousin. And by the way, don't ever refer to My Cousin as a boat. Trust me on this. Friends and followers of Meyer Sign, Tales of the Magic, Skagit, and of course the Beaver Tales series, I'm here at the Island County Historical Museum and uh, looking at a boat. Ah. No. Tony. Someone's going swimming. <laughs> All right. Here, this is why we brought the expert down here. Tony Clasby, school me. School me. Tell me what I'm. Tell me what we're looking at here, and what is the significance to you? A boat is what the Europeans showed up in. Oh my lord! Oh my lord! This is a canoe. Would you have? What 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 would be the best way we could? What what would be the best way we could describe it? This canoe. Yeah. The best way to describe it would be to acknowledge its life, its spirit, um, the job it had while it was still alive and on the water. And it goes because back. She still breathes. She still. She still got life. And it's two hundred years old. Yes. Tony. Yes. So what is it that you've learned about the, uh, the origins, the history uh, of the, this canoe? The canoe itself belonged to this gentleman down here at the end of the canoe called Chief Sneetlin. Um And he was one of the last Skagit tribal members to live his life out here at Cookville. And he was a hereditary chief that had never been acknowledged as a chief. Um, the chief system by that time had gone by the way and the use of chiefs were no longer in existence. But this, is, this was his. Um, carved by a, a Macaw tribe member. I don't remember the Macaw tribal member's name. Um, but we'll, we'll bring great honor to her when we put one just like her in the water. And that's your goal, is to basically... <clears throat> re replicating re re this yeah, replicating this... Yeah, in a strip plank canoe. In a strip plank canoe, amazing. Yes. So how would this have been, how would this canoe have been made, Tony? This is made out of all one piece of wood, except for the the um, the bow and the stern head, okay. head and aft. They they are carved separately, but this is all one piece dug out, and then it's filled with water and stones, hot stones to make the make the canoe wider because mm -hmm. when it's built it's the, the width of the canoe you want right. it to lay out right how long do you think it's going to take you to uh, uh replicate the, the canoe because you've I'm got open, i'm hoping once i get the strong back made three months okay wow and uh tell us about the piece of wood you've got to uh to do it 
Well, it's pieces. Pieces of wood. Pieces. Yeah, pieces of wood. Yes. Um, yeah, I've told the story of my my cousin before, and the yeah, the the journey of the cedar to get into my hands. Um, in my driveway sits the the pieces that I'll use for my cousin, which came from a logger in the Cascades, the helicopter pilot. And he held on to this cedar strip for over 20 years, mm -hmm. not knowing what he was going to do with it. And never did anything with it. And long story short, it's mine. It's yours. <laughs> So you are seeing, folks, the beginnings of my cousin and Tony will be uh, revisiting the uh, the project as, as you go. So uh, I'll let you get at it, man. Thanks. I plan to check in on Tony's efforts from time to time, if for no other reason than to get schooled on canoe culture. I have no doubt, however, that the fruits of his labor would make Chief Snetlum proud along with his descendant, Chief Charlie Snakelum, and his fellow hereditary chief from among the Snohomish, Chief William Shelton, both of whom, as the museum will attest, attended the 1933 Penn Cove Water Festival. And by the way, is it just me, or does Tony bear a passing resemblance to Chief Shelton? <laughs>